Hello friends, Happy Wall Corner is here, and today we're going to take a look at this new brutal indie game, Maniac. Just as the name suggests, this game is violent, so if for some reasons you expected something else from the game called Maniac, this game is not for you. So what is Maniac? The official game page on Steam says GTA meets Vampire Survivors. And broadly speaking, this phrase is fairly accurate and self-explanatory. We play as an insane psychopath who accidentally falls out from an ambulance which supposedly was about to deliver us to an asylum, and the only goal we have is to cause chaos and destruction wherever we go. The more chaos we cause, the more opposition in the face of police, military, some kind of special forces are sent against us. The further we proceed in the game, the more advanced weaponry we get. In order for us to get new abilities or upgrade something we already have, we need to get to this bomb-looking smuggler. When our protagonist gets killed, we get to upgrade basic and special skills with money we have earned over the previous rounds and get back to the city to cause even more destruction in a more efficient ways. And if somehow you manage to survive for 20 minutes, you will see a nuclear attack on the city. By default, we have a drunk Santa Claus as our protagonist, and later on when we complete in-game little quests such as destroy 25 cabs or destroy n number of hot dog wagons, we get access to new characters to play with. The game feels, sounds and looks pretty good, nice looking low poly graphics, alive looking streets, people, cars and police react accordingly to what you do. The game feels, sounds and looks pretty good, nice looking low poly graphics, alive looking streets, people, cars and police react according to what you do. The effects, explosions look decent, sound design and music refer to those Happy Tree Friends or any other ultra-violent cartoon with kids-friendly animation, controls of the character and cars are responsive, cars feel much different from one another, which is a plus. So overall, Maniac is a solid time killer. And if you were looking for something to spare your off work time with, you might as well consider Maniac. The game release is going to be on 28th of March, please add it to your wishlist if you're interested, and if you still hesitate, you can check out the free demo version. So, for those who doesn't want to hear me criticizing the game further, I say thank you for watching, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any new videos, join me on my Twitch and YouTube streams, say hi, nowadays I tend to stream the games I'm about to review on this channel, so you can take a closer look onto it editing free. A huge thank you for the developers Transhuman Design and the publisher Skystone Games for allowing me to deliver this content to you. And to you, the viewer, stay warm and cozy. Bye. Okay, hello again. To those who like me talking crap, here we go. The hitboxes of some items in the city might act weird. Let's say you drive in a car pretty fast, you are sure that you can smash through a fence or a city light, and you cannot. There is a tiny yard with flowers on it, and those flowers are the hardest thing in the universe. They can stop you, even if you drive a freaking tank. This is at least strange. Camera. The game has three options, and none of them is actually good. The default stable helicopter view is somewhat okay, aside from the fact that you don't really see what's behind certain buildings, even though you can drive there freely. The dynamic helicopter view looks cool in videos or game trailers, or if you could watch your whole run from the very beginning to the end, that would look great, but while you are playing, this view is somewhat dizzy and unpredictable. 
And the third view, which is a classic top-down GTA 2 Hotline Miami style kind of view, which I personally find plain to look at, tell me in the comments that I'm wrong. And now let's break down the GTA Vampire Survivor statement. First of all, there is nothing from GTA here aside from the city. No story, no missions, so I would say that it is much more Vampire Survivors than GTA. It is just the city and cars and nothing else. Then, as a vampire survivors, Maniac is not there yet. There are only six playable characters as of now. You might say, but they can add more in the future, wouldn't that make it better? Thanks for asking, and I don't think so, simply because the difference between all of the six is minimal. The special abilities, which is one, are different. Equipment looks different, but acts in a more or less the same way. There is no difference between a bomb looking like a Christmas gift and a bomb disguised as a balloon. And the biggest complaint I have is that the characters don't share the basic skills what you upgrade. So, if I upgrade everything with one character and then start playing with another, I start from scratch, even though it's literally the same abilities and the characters themselves differ only with their appearance at most. So why exactly do I need to play with another character? The progression in the game is a bit strange as well. You don't level up with the amount of chaos you caused. The only way for you to improve is to get to that smuggler what I mentioned before. So at some point the game turns out to be more about running away from police and not building the unstoppable killing machine like in Vampire Survivors, let's say. At some point, you are not there to cause chaos, but to run away from it, which kind of contradicts with the initial idea. There are simply not that much content yet. Every run turns out to be more or less the same. There are not that many abilities you get from the smuggler. Also, most of them don't really change the gameplay itself, unlike the vampire survivors where each weapon or an item changes your strategy and the way you operate your character and so on. Not mentioning that we play in the same very city over and over again all the time. It's not bad, it is just that there is nothing else to do aside from going from a smuggler to another smuggler you don't even need to focus on causing damage. You just go from point to point, and if you cause some mess on the way by an accident, so be it. So overall, I would say the same what I said before. It is a pretty nice feeling, nice looking time killer, but there must be much more content there. More unique abilities, more unique characters, changing gameplay weapons or skills, perhaps some mini games inside the city, more achievements, more challenges in order to make each run unique and engaging. I have played for about 5 to 6 hours and I must say that the game doesn't seem to be able to deliver me any new experience as of now at this zero add-on, zero update stage. I see a lot of potential in this game, and I hope that the developers won't take my words as bad, but rather as suggestions and good wishes. Please take a look at the demo version of this game, try it yourself, and let me know in the comment section if you disagree with whatever I said in this video. Please let me know what is your favorite Vampire Survivors-like game. Don't hesitate to join me on my streams and say hi in a chat. Please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you like what I do. That would support me and my channel a lot. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. You can check out other videos of mine. Let me know what game you would like me to review next if you have any suggestions. And as always, stay warm and cozy. Bye. So let's take a look at this feature. This is an editor. How cool is that? No, seriously. Let's make it this way. We have roads. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that's super dumb. So we can actually play this right now. Look, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be nuts. Okay, look at us. We're in the edge. Okay. <laughs>
one of the best features of this game. Like, if you can share this map with your friends, let's say, that could be really cool. I love it. Oh no.